still gonna win this! Give it your best shot! Infernate, I choose you! Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll be breaking down the complete history of Ash's Infernate, detailing all his battles, storylines, and character development. Infernape debuted as a Chimchar under the control of Paul, one of Ash's greatest rivals. Paul met Chimchar shortly after the fire type fled from the gang of wild Zangoose and protected himself from their attacks with a blaze fueled flame wheel. Chimchar loved Paul with all his heart and desperately wanted his approval, but Paul thought he was nothing more than a tool to help him win the Sinnoh League. Because Chimchar failed to meet Paul's expectations or control Blaze, Paul regularly criticized his abilities, called him useless, and pushed him harder than any other Pokemon. No matter how hard Chimchar tried or how many times he beat Paul's Elekid, he rarely received words of praise or encouragement. During Chimchar's debut and when Pokemon Worlds collide in Paul's first battle with Ash, Chimchar did his best to make Paul proud, but was no match for Apom. Chimchar countered Swift, preempted Focus Punch, overcame Double Team, and scratched Apom, but Apom dodged his Flame Wheel and won with Focus Punch. Paul was so mad at the battle's outcome that he sought out Ash in different strokes for different blokes and challenged him to a rematch. As is typical in the series, Team Rocket interrupted the battle before it concluded. After Chimchar showcased his natural athleticism, torched the Stantler, and helped Paul catch Ursaring, he finished off Turtwig with Scratch, Peekaboo, Ember, and Flame Wheel. When Chimchar tried to celebrate his victory, Paul destroyed his self-esteem by calling him pathetic. Thereafter, Paul began to question Chimchar's position on his team and forced him into many tough battles, with the hope that the massive pain he incurred would strengthen Blaze. During Paul's battle with Rourke in Shapes of Things to Come, Chimchar faced off against the gym leaders Onyx and Cranidos. Chimchar tanked Onyx's Stealth Rock, threw it for a loop, dodged Double Edge, won with Dig, and earned Paul's praise, but suffered tremendously against Cranidos. The fossil Pokemon pummeled Chimchar with Zen Headbutt, took major damage from two blazing flame wheels, focused its energy, and triumphed with Headbutt. The loss worsened in Paul's opinion of Chimchar and led him to question Chimchar's position on his team. Paul's harsh treatment of Chimchar not only irked Dash, but also Sinnoh champion Cynthia. After Cynthia's Garchomp beat Chimchar and Paul's other Pokemon in top-down training, she scolded Paul for not immediately healing his Pokemon and for not being more empathetic when Team Rocket tried to steal Chimchar. In spite of her criticism, Cynthia believed Paul a promising trainer whose destiny would be forever intertwined with Ash's. She was proven correct on both accounts in Tag Were It when Paul and Ash teamed up at the Heart Home City Tag Battle. Ash tried to make amends before the competition began, but Paul rejected his friendship and iterated that he only entered to power up his Pokemon. In their first battle together, Paul rejected Ash's help and told Chimchar to tank all their opponent's attacks. Pikachu defended Chimchar from Surf and beat Rhydon, so Chimchar seized its opportunity and vanquished Magmar. It so upset Paul that Chimchar still hadn't reached his full potential that he left in a huff. As punishment for Chimchar's supposedly subpar performance and inability to control Flamethrower, Paul subjected him to cruel training in Glory Blaze. Seeing Paul Paul's Pokemon clobber Chimchar so upset Ash, Dawn, and Pikachu that they admonished Paul, jumped to Chimchar's defense, and ferried him to Nurse Joy. Paul's mistreatment of Chimchar also angered Brock, who believed that Chimchar would either get stronger from the training or be emotionally scarred for life. Nurse Joy echoed Brock's worries by demanding Paul let Chimchar rest, but he refused her request and sent out Chimchar in the tournament's very next battle. Ash worried for Chimchar's safety, so he tasked Turtwig with keeping him safe. Much to Chimchar's dismay and Paul's pleasure, their opponents were Metagross and Zangoose. Even though Turtwig saved Chimchar from Crush Claw, Paul forced Chimchar to mow down Metagross, not caring that Turtwig would be hit in Flame Wheel's Crossfire. Inspired by Turtwig's resilience and friendship, Chimchar put aside his fear and stopped an errant fire blast. Unfortunately, Paul gave up halfway through the battle anyway and stopped giving commands. Rather than accept defeat, Ash took control of Chimchar, commanded him to incinerate Metagross, and ordered Turtwig to wall Zangoose. Immediately following the battle's end, Paul released Chimchar as he cared little for Chimchar's well-being, wanted a stronger fire type, and thought Chimchar a lost cause. The trauma Chimchar endured so warped his mind that he actually pleaded for Paul to take him back. When Paul refused, Chimchar walked away in shame. Thankfully, Ash took pity, extended an olive branch, and asked Chimchar to join his team. Paul approved their union as he thought them both deserving of each other and utterly pathetic. Once Chimchar learned Ash wanted to prove Paul wrong and that Ash would give him the love he desired, he gleefully entered Ash's arsenal in Smells Like Team Spirit. During the Heart Home Finals, Chimchar made his debut on Ash's team as Elekid's partner against Don's Bleasel and Conway's Heracross. Since Paul refused to coordinate, he and Ash got off to a very rocky start. It wasn't until Elekid evolved into Electabuzz that they finally gained the advantage. After the two rivals combined their strength, Chimchar and Electabuzz won with Flamethrower and Thunder, making Ash and Paul the tournament's victors. 
Chimchar's victory not only filled Ash with pride, but also Team Rocket, who had grown to see Chimchar as a kindred soul, one whose underdog status made him their ultimate hero. Shortly after the tournament concluded, Chimchar learned that life with Ash was infinitely better than existence with Paul. Unlike Paul, who only valued Chimchar's power and never let him show emotion, Ash truly cared for Chimchar and showered him with praise, no matter if he won or lost. After Chimchar lost to Piplup in Tears for Fears, for example, Ash and the rest of the gang brought about an emotional catharsis by complimenting Chimchar's strength and encouraging him to keep getting stronger. Despite Ash's love, Chimchar's trauma and fear of Zangoose plagued his subconscious. While walking off a nightmare, Chimchar talked through his issues with Meowth. In one of Meowth's most poignant moments of the series, he told Chimchar to stop focusing on the past and instead look towards the future, as a new life awaited him. The next day, Chimchar took Meowth's advice to heart, overcame his fear, and bravely saved the gang's Pokemon from a herd of Zangoose. In Chimchar, Chimchar tried to put his past behind him and prove his newfound strength to Paul, but Ursaring hindered his progress. During the two's battle, Ursaring unearthed Chimchar, intercepted Flame Wheel, fired off secret power, forcefully threw Chimchar onto the ground, caused him to flinch, and did massive damage with Hammer on. Chimchar grew so angry from the assault that he activated Blaze and prevailed using the most powerful Flame Wheel Paul had ever seen. Though Chimchar then lost control, violated Smokey the Bear's most sacred rule, and bit Ash, Ash held Chimchar in his embrace until he calmed down and reassured Chimchar that no matter what may happen, he'll always have his back. While Ash loved Chimchar unconditionally, Chimchar's destructive outburst so scared him that he told Paul in aiding the enemy that he wouldn't force Chimchar to use Blaze. Even though Chimchar's emotional fright at seeing Paul often held him back, he never stopped trying to topple his insecurities. As the saga progressed, Chimchar became one of Ash's most helpful companions. He helped Cacnea master Drain Punch, fought off Matang, dug Ash to safety, thwarted Team Rocket's schemes, saved Pikachu from Saturn's Toxicroak, and helped Ash win many badges. Chimchar didn't garner any wins against Veilstone gym leader Maylene in a triple fighting chance, but he did significant injury to both her Meditite and Lucario. Chimchar initially struggled against Heart Home gym leader Fantina in playing the leveling field, so he trained diligently to master the counter shield before Ash's rematch with the gym leader in Shield with a Twist. Chimchar's first opponent, Miss Magius, blocked Flame Wheel, withstood Flamethrower, overcame the counter shield and shot off Dark Pulse, but Chimchar burned it into submission. After Pikachu and Weasel fell to Drifblim, Chimchar emerged as Ash's trump card. Drifblim repelled Flame Wheel, but Chimchar absorbed will wist into his flamethrower, dug away from Ominous Wind, slammed Drifblim into the ground, and won with another flamethrower. At the Cantilave Gym, in dealing with defensive types, Chimchar served as Ash's bruiser. Gym leader Byron got off to an early lead as his Bronzor resisted Chimchar's firepower with Heatproof, made it rain, dodged flamethrower, and fired off Gyro Ball. After Chimchar turned things around and claimed victory with Flame Wheel, he took down Steelix using Flamethrower, Dig, and Flame Wheel. Byron's final Pokemon, Bastiodon, took advantage of Chimchar's exhaustion, activated Iron Defense, and prevailed with Metal Burst, but Ash earned the Mind Badge anyway thanks to Gliscor. In sliding into 7th, Ash took advantage of Chimchar's fire typing and used it opposite Snowpoint Gym Leader Candice's ice types. Her Snover blocked Flamethrower and coated the arena in mist, but Chimchar sensed its location, knocked it out with Flamethrower, took a brief break, and then fought Obama Snow. Even though Obama Snow overpowered Flamethrower, followed up with Ice Shard, nearly crushed Chimchar and put him on the ropes, Chimchar surfed on one of the shards, set Obama Snow ablaze, finished up with Flame Wheel, and earned Ash the Icicle Pack. Beyond his many gym battles, Chimchar also beat up Yanmega, trained with Pikachu, sharpened his skills with Grottle, teamed with Brock's Pseudo Widow against Don's Piplup and Leona Swina, fought off a Poacher's Glalie, barbecued Barry's Star Raptor, and got pulverized by Barry's Rose Raid. Chimchar's growing strength led Cynthia to believe it destined for greatness and the touchstone for Ash's relationship with Paul. During Ash and Paul's full battle and pedal to the metal and evolving strategies, Chimchar struggled against Electabuzz and Torterra, so Ash saved his firepower for Ursaring. Soon after beating Ursaring with Dig and Flamethrower, Chimchar rose to the occasion, evolved into Monferno, learned Mock Punch, and battled Electabuzz. Monferno's massive upgrade in speed took Electabuzz by surprise, but Electabuzz recovered, countered with Thunder, and protected itself from Flame Wheel. Not letting up one iota, Monferno dodged Thunder Punch, landed Dig, broke through Thunder, pushed forward with an impressive assault, and overcame a Thunder-induced paralysis to use Mock Punch. Despite Monferno's valiant comeback, Electabuzz triumphed with Thunder Punch, winning Paul the battle. Since Paul wasn't able to get Chimchar to evolve, Monferno's transformation and upgrade power perfectly proved his compatibility with Ash's training style. After Monferno healed from his injuries and reignited his resolve to one day beat Paul, he blasted off Team Rocket, competed in the Pokeathlon, trained with Piplup, teamed with Cyndaquil against Lyra's Chikorita and Curry's Croconaut, and fought Barry's Empoleon in fighting Ire with Fire. 
following Monferno's blast off by Hydra Cannon, he activated Blaze, broke out in rage, and started a rampage. During his fiery tantrum, Monferno heard Ash, blasted off the evil trio, and nearly caused Pikachu, Piplup, and Empoleon's demise. While Paul's Electabuzz rescued the three Pokemon from certain doom, Ash embraced Monferno and reminded him of their promise to get stronger together. Upon calming down, Monferno saved Electabuzz, evolved into Infernape, exchanged a terse smile with his rival, and freed his friends from their iron prison. Infernape's transformation so impressed Paul, he promised Ash they would settle their rivalry at the Sinnoh League. To prepare for his showdown with Paul, Infernape clashed with Flint's Infernape, demolished Nerissa's Ditto, scared off wild vile plumes, and fought Electric-type gym leader Volkner in the eighth wonder of the Sinnoh world. Versus Volkner's Jolteon, Infernape opened with Mock Punch, Tank Thunderbolt, deflected Shadow Ball, and won with another Mock Punch. Infernape then took a quick break and battled Volkner's Luxray. Because Luxray blocked Flamethrower, dodged Mach Punch, fired off Thunderfang, launched Shockwave, let loose another Thunderfang, and countered Dig with Iron Tail, Infernape lost his temper and activated Blaze. Fortunately for Volkner's insurance company, Ash's never-ending belief and trust in Infernape's abilities gave Infernape the strength he needed to control his anger and finally master Blaze. Once he resumed fighting, Infernape torched Luxray, shrugged off Thunderfang, shot off Mach Punch, prevented Iron Tail, and won with Flame Wheel. Thanks to Infernape, Ash earned both the Beacon Badge and entry to the Sinnoh League. While training for the League and working on a right move, Infernape learned Flare Blitz, a recoil-inducing attack that lets him strike his opponents with incredible force. During the League's fifth round in familiarity breed strategy, a real rival rouser, and battling the Thawne relations, Infernape came face to face with Paul's many Pokemon and fought harder than ever before as he wanted to make Ash proud, seize victory, and prove his worth as a Pokemon. Against Agron, Infernape countered Double Edge, induced a nasty burn, and won with Mach Punch. Opposite Ninjask, Infernape found himself poisoned from Drapion's toxic spikes. Knowing that the spikes would present Pikachu a major issue later in the battle, Infernape dug underground and burned them all away with Flare Blitz. Before returning to his Pokeball, Infernape withstood Giga Drain, tracked Ninjask's movements, and punched it into oblivion. Once each trainer was down to their final Pokemon, Infernape set out to settle the score with Electivire. While Infernape was both exhausted and poisoned, Electivire had only taken minor damage against Pikachu and Gliscor. After Infernape traded punches with Electivire, Electivire protected itself from Flamethrower, missed Thunder, took massive damage from Dig, chopped through Flamethrower, shot off numerous attacks, intercepted Mach Punch, and downed Infernape with Thunder. Infernape looked down for the count, but Electivire stopped the referee from declaring Paul the winner and encouraged Infernape to keep fighting. Using Paul's insult as motivation, Infernape supercharged his strength with Blaze, overwhelmed Thunder with Flamethrower, sent Electivire flying with Mach Punch, countered Thunder Punch with Flare Blitz, and proved Paul wrong once and for all. Electivire withstood the assault just long enough to exchange a terse smile of approval, but ultimately fell in defeat as its strength was no match for Infernape's passion. Having won the battle, Infernape earned both Ash's praise and Paul's respect. The spectacular match led Cynthia to believe both Ash and Paul would soon enter the Champion League. Shortly after Ash lost to Tobias, he left Infernape and his other Pokémon with Oak so that he could start fresh with Pikachu and Unibu. While Ash traveled the world, Infernape impressed Gary with his dedication to training and regularly honed his skills against the awesome might of Charizard, Quilava, Pignite, and Talonflame. In Pokemon Journeys, Infernape escaped from the lab, sought out Moltres, happily reunited with Ash, and challenged the legendary bird to battle. During the scuffle, Moltres absorbed Flamethrower, encased Infernape within Fire Spin, deflected Mach Punch, repelled Flare Blitz, and left Infernape exhausted. Infernape wanted to keep fighting, but Gary's Blastoise stole the spotlight. Even though Infernape didn't settle the score with Moltres, the tale of his adventure thrilled his friends back at the lab and provided me an opportunity to rant about how Journeys did Infernape a major disservice. It's currently unknown if Infernape will appear in any other episodes beyond a brief cameo, but if he does, I'll be sure to follow up with an update. And now for the battle record. Infernape won against Paul's Elekid, Ash's Churchwig, Rourke Sonics, and Ace Trainer's Magmar, a Psychic's Metagross, Conway's Heracross, Free Zangoose, Jesse's Yanmega, Paul's Ursaring, Fantina's Miss Magius, Fantina's Driftblim, Byron's Bronzor, Byron's Steelix, Candace's Snover, Candace's Abomasnow, Barry's Star Raptor, Lyra's Chikorita, Kuri's Crocona, Nerissa's Ditto, Volkner's Jolteon, Volkner's Luxray, Paul's Agron, Paul's Ninjask, and Paul's Electivire. He lost to Ash's Apom, Rourke's Cranidos, Cynthia's Garchomp, Don's Piplup, Barry's Rose Raid, Maylene's Lucario, Byron's Bastiodon, Paul's Electabuzz, and Flint's Infernape. During a double battle, Infernape tied with Don's Piplup and Leona Swina. Over the course of the series, Infernape used Ember, Scratch, Flame Wheel, Dig, Fire Spin, Flamethrower, Mach Punch, and Flare Blitz. Infernape easily ranks as one of Ash's best Pokemon. 
He's a lovable underdog with tremendous firepower who you can't help but root for. Inferno Ape's narrative progression perfectly captured Ash's rivalry with Paul and made their final showdown into one of the most emotionally charged battles in the entire series. Part of what I love most about Inferno Ape is how his finding of happiness served as both the ultimate rebuke to Paul's behavior and also a major testament to Ash's skill as a trainer. Whenever Ash assembles his ultimate team, I can't wait to see Inferno Ape stand shoulder to shoulder with Greninja and Charizard. And with that, class is adjourned. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're never late. And for extra credit, like this video and let me know your thoughts on Ash's Inferno. Until next time, catch you later.